Hello YouTube, me and Maddie are in Guanajuato, absolutely beautiful colonial city and today we are going to tour around and show you the top things to do in Guanajuato while you're here and we went around yesterday and we were blown away so we thought maybe we would share everything to do, what to eat, what to see, where to go, so we hope you enjoy. So we are in Plaza de San Fernando and it's an amazing plaza with a bunch of different restaurants all around us or cute little cafes. It's a great place to come people watch and on the weekends they've got different farmers markets. You might go grab a bite to eat or just go in and go wander around Plaza de San Fernando. So we are in Plaza de Los Angeles and from here is where you can go and then see the kissing alley. Let's go. Guanajuato is known for having so many adorable little alleyways. They've got amazing colors everywhere. It's probably the most colorful city we've been to yet. So now we are walking up the alley to go to the kissing alley. I guess while we're here. Now you have to stand on this red step right here. My first kiss. Oh. We went around to the back side of the kissing alley because look at how narrow this is. So the kissing alley gets its name because of the two balconies that are only 27 inches apart or 69 centimeters apart. So close. And back in the day, there was a young girl and a young man who lived on each side, but their parents forbid them to see each other. And so they'd reach across their balconies and kiss each other. So it's kind of like Guanajuato's own Romeo and Juliet story. One of the steps here is actually painted red, and that is supposed to be exactly where they used to kiss, right above you. And it is said that if you kiss on that step, it brings you seven years of good luck. And Pat might kiss there. Or maybe it's not good luck. Maybe it's like seven or like ten years of a good relationship. But so you're stuck with me now. If you walk a little bit past the main kissing spot on these stairs, there is a restaurant right there. I'm not sure what they serve, but it looks like the coolest interior of a bar. So right now we are actually in one of Guanajuato's underground traffic tunnels. And if you look at Guanajuato, it's in a mountain city and the streets are very narrow. So they built these underground traffic tunnels to make it easier for people to get from point A to point B. And if you notice when you're walking through the streets, there are people driving around, but they're usually congested within traffic. So if you take these underground tunnels, you can get to places a lot quicker and it makes it very enjoyable to walk around the city because there aren't as many vehicles driving around. So as you can see, I'm in a tunnel intersection and I personally think this is genius and I remember watching a podcast on Joe Rogan and Elon Musk was saying Los Angeles should do the same thing. Mind blown. Guanajuato is way ahead of you, Elon. They're probably gonna go to Mars before you. And now we just ended up in a totally different part of town. So, time to go wander back to where we were at. Here we are in the Plaza de la Paz, which stands for the Plaza of Peace. And this actually used to be, back in the day, the main center for government bureaus and all the legislative people. They would come and gather here. So I asked Patrick to walk up here on this ledge. I was referring to just the sidewalk, but he chooses that little skinny ledge right there. He says the kids are doing it. Anybody else uh, have a grown partner that acts like a child? Watch what? this. Parkour, parkour. Watch parkour. The Plaza de la Paz is a great place. Just come hang out in this little garden. 
enjoy the beautiful cathedral behind you. There's a bunch of different little restaurants and shops around you. Makes for a very enjoyable, relaxing time in Guanajuato. So right now we're just hanging out in the Plaza de La Paz. Behind us is the, the Basilica Colegiatia. No. Nailed it. Okay, I'm just gonna read off the phone. We've got the Basilica Colegiata de Nuestra Señora de Guanajuato. Here we have the Templo de Campanion and it has some beautiful facades? Facades? What are they? Are they facades? Facades? Like the really pretty... Um, Funyuns. No, no. What are you talking about? Like the design on the outside of a building. Architecture. <laughs> Either way. It's gorgeous. The amount of detail that goes into it is... It's incredible. So behind us we have the University of Guanajuato. It was made in 1732 and it actually was originally a hospital and then they converted it to a university. And normally you can go to the top of the steps. It's blocked off right now, but supposedly you get a great panoramic view of the city. Um, yesterday we were lucky enough to see a bunch of doctors graduating. I don't know if they were feet doctor, throat doctors, what they were, but kudos, kudos, what is the word? Kudos? Kudos to them. All right, so here we have the start of Calle de Sopeña. This is going to be the main street in Guanajuato that is going to give you all of the main tourist attraction sites. It's going to start in Plaza de La Paz and go all the way to Templo de San Francisco. This guy is playing his music so loud. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. So on this street, there's a bunch of different vendors. You're gonna be able to see a bunch of different statues and all the main must-stop stops in Guanajuato, in Calle de Sopeña. Well, I lost Pat, but that's okay because I am relaxing here in the Jardín de Union or the Union Garden. It is actually the first square or center plaza that was turned into a garden here in Guanajuato, and it is gorgeous. It's a triangle shape, it's cased in these huge bushes, there's fountains everywhere. It's a very peaceful town, and you can just hang out here. It's really enjoyable. Right in front of this garden, there is the theater, and then there's also the Templo de San Diego. So it's a very busy area. There's always things to do around here. And it's also right off of that Calle de Sopeña. So the busy street that's got everything on it. Here we've got the Templo de San Diego. There might be a wedding happening in there right now, but everyone's like dressed in like fancy ball gowns. So behind me here we have the Teatro de Juarez, the Theater of Juarez. It was built from 1872 until 1903. It is known to be one of the most beautiful theaters in all of Mexico. It is still in use and you can go and attend a show uh, from opera to dancing to, I don't really know what else. Probably just a bunch of different things that theaters normally hold. It was in fact a wedding and wow, do people, I don't know if it's all of Mexico, but especially in Guanajuato, People really get dressed up for weddings. Like, everyone here looks amazing. We are here in the middle of December and the weather has been pleasant. Personally, I think it's a little chilly. That would say it's very enjoyable. It is a mountain town, so you do get those really cool evenings. Temperatures have been around, they probably start off around like 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. And then in the afternoon, they're around 75. Still haven't found Pat, so I'm just kind of hanging out. 
He doesn't know that I'm following. Oh! <laughs> <You're making it laughs> so, funny. <laughs> so funny, I've been following him. Sneak up on I've been following him for quite a while. Have you? Yeah. I'm standing in front of Templo de San Francisco and it was built in 1741. Pretty cool. Guanajuato is known for having so many cute little alleyways and they're also known for having little cafes that have awesome balcony spots you can sit out and look at these alleyways. Here behind me we have Santo Cafe and they have got this bridge here so you can sit there, enjoy the alleyway and a balcony. We are at the beer company and this place is cool. They got a whole shelf of different kind of beers from Mexico, from the United States, from about anywhere. And what you do is you grab a beer off the wall, you hand it to the beer tender and he goes matches it in the fridge, then he gives it to you and gives it in a glass. And it's kind of cool. You get to try a bunch of different beers. It was 170 pesos, so about $3.50 a beer. So not too bad really. And it's a beautiful view on top of a rooftop patio. Alright guys, so behind me here is the Regional Museum of Guanajuato. It's one of the most well-known museums here. It highlights all of the heroes from the revolution. This building, the Alondiga, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It became a fortress in 1810. And in 1958, it has become the regional museum. It's filled with murals and artifacts from Mexico's history. Definitely worth checking out. He's getting me some popcorn. He's my favorite. This popcorn is so good. Oh no. <laughs> that was such a fail. Try it again. The world-renowned artist Diego Rivera is from Guanajuato and right here we have his home. They have now turned it into a museum that features some of his original art pieces and they kind of have it displayed and set up as what his home used to look like when he was a child growing up here. best tacos we've had in a long time so when you're in Guanajuato and go out check out a bunch of bars <laughs> there are so many awesome bars here it's almost one in the morning best stop is to then come to El Potro El Loco and get yourself some amazing tacos. What's your favorite taco? Oh, I love their bistec. It was so good. They have so many toppings, so many different salsas and pineapples and cucumbers and cilantro and they've got some tortas and they've got quesadillas and they've got sopes. And, but our favorite is always tacos. So make sure you come to El Potro Loco and get yourself some tacos at one in the morning. <laughs> Cause why not? All right, we are awake. Hungover. Bright and early. After going out on the town last night. Oh One of the best things to do in Guanajuato is go to their bars. They have so many little hole in the wall bars and some Roof. really cool rooftop clubs. <clears throat> so that's what we did last night. Now we're up bright and early to go on a food tour because Guanajuato has one of the best food scenes that we've seen in a while. Mexico City, obviously, still number one. But the food here in Guanajuato is so cheap and delicious. So we're about to go on a tour now. This was only a dollar and ten cents for three chorizo tacos. Can't beat that for breakfast. We just 
got done at Bakery Luna. I've got traditional Mexican sweet bread and Pet's got a donut. donut now we're gonna get bitter. some tamales. Mmm, that's really good. When you're in Mexico, there are always stands that are selling tamales just out of little jugs in the morning. We just got done eating two amazing tamales. One of us got a pork with like a red salsa and then the other one had like a spinach, cheese, and ham in it. And they were so good and so cheap. And just from a little guy standing on the sidewalk and just like out of like a metal jug. And they were really good. Oh, gracias. This is called a vampire juice. It's carrot juice, beet juice, and fresh squeezed orange juice all mixed together. You really can taste over anything that beet juice overpowers, but I bet this is gonna cure my hangover. So that's good. Yummy. Pat just said his hangover's gone, so it looks like the beet juice is curing him. But this orange juice is so good. So every year in the month of October, I believe it's either three weeks or the full month of October, there is a big festival in Guanajuato. Uh, it's called Cervantino. It originated because every year the university would put together a play. These plays were a time for the local people to come together and just kind of enjoy themselves because life wasn't the easiest here. And this play would revolve around Don Quixote. And so that's why in Guanajuato you see so many statues and so much influence by Don Quixote. I believe it was around the 70s or 80s, it became more of a tourist place and it really started to get more um, international influence and international attention, bringing more and more people here. So now, instead of that being just a week-long play by university students, they've actually turned it into an entire universal or international influence. Okay, that was painful to watch. I was pretty awkward there. So basically what I was trying to say was that it started out as just small local plays, but now it is turned into a well-known festival. Yeah, sounds about right. Guanajuato was built around their main river, and the Spanish elites would build their houses on either side of the river. Now the river has been dammed and so uh, where the main river used to run is now this main road tunnel. The river would continue to flood so they'd have to continue to build their houses higher and higher and higher. So you can see down here in the tunnel there's doors and windows but then they had to make it all cement and then build up higher and build up higher. That's why when you're down here it's so high up to see the top of the houses. Many people think that the tunnels here in Guanajuato are like old mining tunnels, but in fact they're actually not. They were just built in the 70s because when the town was first built, most people didn't have vehicles because they lived up in the hills. And so then once more people got cars and more tourists started coming here, they had to make a better system for traffic. And that is why we have the tunnels. Right. Back in the 1700s, the elites and the richest people in Guanajuato built their houses right above the river over these bridges. And so here we can see all of these arches. We are actually just underneath houses right now. As you can see, this pipe right here would actually just be like their pipe systems for their sewage in their house. So if you had the most money, you would live right above the river because this used to be the river. And then you could just dump all your sewage straight into the river. Like we said, only the rich could live by the river and majority of people lived up in the hills. And if you couldn't afford to get water piped up to you, there were these fountains right here. There would be roughly 60 to 100 houses that would have to use this one fountain. So early in the morning, families would have to line up, bring their buckets so they could get fresh water. What a lot of people do, they just have like a room 
like a kitty box where they just go fill it up with dirt and go on the floor and then some unfortunate soul would have to shovel that up once or twice a week and carry it up back there. I always think it'd be really interesting to put yourself back in time, you know, go back to what Guanajuato was like in the 1500s. And then you hear how it actually really was. And you realize, nope, I don't need to go back there. This mural represents kind of all the history of Guanajuato. We have the Aztec indigenous people. And then it turns to when the Spaniards came over and they forced the indigenous people to be their slaves. And they mined for them here. You can see them mining. You can see the king of Spain then taking all the wealth from all the hard work that they did. You can see here miners dying. And then this is when the miners rising from the dead and coming back with a torch. And then we hear we have El Pipila and he has the stone on his back and he broke into the building and that was part of the Mexican Revolution. Here we can see New Mexico after they took Mexico back from the Spaniards. Prosperous, enjoyable life. So El Pipilo was a miner and he was an indigenous warrior during the independence revolutionary war of Mexico against the Spanish and he was very smart and when the Mexican army came to take back over Guanajuato from the Spanish the Spanish barricaded themselves in like their military room where they had all their weapons and everything so even though that the Mexican army had 20,000 people and the Spanish only had about 800 to a thousand people here soldiers here they were losing the battle because the Mexican army only had machetes where the Spanish soldiers had muskets so they were losing the battle so El Pipilo as you can see from behind us had an idea to put a rock on his back and to walk underneath the windows of their military building and so when they shot at him bullets would hit the rocks so he was able to get to the entrance door and he burned it down and then the Mexican army ran in and killed all the soldiers within and from there they won that battle then they moved to Mexico City and then continued for 11 years until they won their independence so pretty awesome story really and that guy's a badass so after the, after the uh, Picula burned down the door the Mexicans entered uh, killed everybody inside men women and children then the Mexican army uh, head toward Mexico City, uh, started fighting other battles, they lose battles, win battles, but eventually one of the battles that they lost, the Spanish captured the leaders of the Mexican army, who were Allende, Hidalgo, Jimenez, y Aldame. They were, they had a trial and were felt, uh, found guilty for treason. They were later shot and their heads were cut off and brought back to Guanajuato and hung on the corners of the Lundiga. Until the remaining of the war, finally Mexico won the war and the heads were taken down and buried in Mexico City. Talacoyos. Talacoyos, which is like a gordita. And this one is desperada, which is shredded beef with chilies. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Cheese, the cheese is amazing. Mm -hmm. Tala chicoles? I don't know. I butcher the name every time. He's told me five times. But it's a, like a gordita quesadilla with queso in it. Uh, Desabrata, which is shredded beef. And then it had chilies in it. And it had a nice crunch. And it was so good. And there are only 20 pesos. And I probably could have ate a million of them. going into Mercado Hidalgo and it reminded us of Mercado Libertad in Guadalajara. You guys are going to help yourselves to the meat you guys like. So this is like, um, you're going to have just normal meat, which will be the light meat. But then you know, if it has some of the darker meat, it's going to be a little bit more flavorful. But it might have a little cartilage because it seems like it might be like the ear or something. Oh, okay. But it has a lot of flavor. So right don't think about what you're eating, just enjoy it. Just eat it. Alright, cool. How's your taco? 
my carnita is wonderful. <laughs> All right, John. Yes. How would you describe Guanajuato? Colonial city in the hills. It's uh, you know very magical. It's a very unique town. What What is one thing that you absolutely love about this place? I love the fact that everyone walks around. That it's very hard to get around in a car, so everyone just walks around. It makes it a very lively, a vibrant little city. One of my favorite things. So we're Guanajuato street food tours. Uh, you can find us on Google. And um, yeah, so I would just look up uh, Mexico Street Food Tour. Okay. Uh, Mexico Street Food Tours, yeah. Right on. Well, we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys so much. So, you definitely can walk from the historical center to the Mummy Museum. It's only like 30 minutes from the town center. But what they don't tell you is that it is straight up a hill. <laughs> like the entire walk, you're just like walking straight up. <laughs> My calves are burning. But now we're gonna go check out some mummies. In Guanajuato, family members had to pay yearly fees to keep their family members buried. If you could not afford this fee, they would remove your family member to make room for somebody else. When they went to remove these bodies, they actually found them to be mummified and to not have decayed. I'm sure whoever found them was in for quite the shock. Ugh. And now they keep the mummies in the mummy museum here in Guanajuato. These images that you're about to see are pretty intense, so we definitely recommend parental advisory. We saved this for last, so if you choose not to watch this, you can end the video now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Now, on to the mummies. Have you ever seen a mummy? I've seen the movie Mummy. I have never actually seen a mummy in person. Should be interesting. I'm excited. The bodies were preserved naturally, deep in the wall crypts, which are isolated from the ground above. There is no humidity or oxygen bound with the exterior, and this creates the ideal conditions for the spontaneous desiccation of tissue and interrupts the process of decomposition. Am I to leave like the flowers that perished? The guides of this museum call this mummy China Girl. Perhaps that is because of her clothing and oriental features. Here we have Juan. He was buried in 1903, and he is the most well-preserved mummy in the entire collection. He has no holes in any of his skin. Well, what was your uh, experience with mummies? It was kind of creepy. It was like, there were some times where I was like, is this okay? And then I also was like, right, or is it just gonna jump at me? Is it gonna come back to life? I think you get the shock because it was actually people walking this earth one day. Yeah. And because Guanajuato is so dry that they would bury them, but then their bodies would just dry up and mummify. So then they decided to kind of honor them and make the museum. But I've never seen anything like that and how the body changes over time when it mummifies. Yeah, it was super interesting. And so I read one article in there that it was saying how all of the mummies in there, they weren't buried in the ground. They were buried in like a standing up tomb. And there was no oxygen, no humidity or anything that could get to it. There was one mummy in there and it wasn't really a mummy because you could see its bones and it was completely decaying. And that was the only one that was buried in a casket in the ground. So I think how they were able to become mummified was because they weren't actually buried in caskets in the ground. They were buried in like a cement enclosure. And they dried up. Type thing. Yeah, and then since there was no moisture in there, there was no air in there or anything, it was completely sealed, that's what caused it to, them to mummify? I think. 
I don't know. I think the hard part were the babies. Yeah, honestly. The babies. Did you see the one? So there's one where it's a six month old fetus. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's like the mom, and they found the mom holding her baby. And the mom passed away from malnutrition. Yeah. So they think that more than likely she was from a poor family, but the fetus couldn't have been so this small. big. It was so, that was a tough one that for sure to like look at. Yeah. And then the ending part is super creepy, almost yeah. like a haunted house. And we both walked through it by ourselves. And I was <laughs> actually scared. I was like, okay, get me the fuck out of here. Honestly, I can't tell if that was a museum I enjoyed just because of what it actually is. I enjoyed sense. it just because the science part in my brain was like, how yeah. did it do this? But it's interesting. If yeah. you go to Guanajuato, it's worth checking out. I think it was 200 pesos for us to do it, so about $10. So it's definitely yeah. an experience that you probably won't get anywhere else. So Yeah, it says that this, I think that's the, those are like the only naturally mummified in the world. I could be wrong. But the fetus is the smallest human mummified object in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Yeah. But we got to get going because we're going to miss our flight. No, we're not. Overall, I would say it's not the most lively museum, <laughs> but it's worth going to. <laughs> All right, Pat. Was the museum worth the dreadful walk? Oh, look at it this way. It was good exercise. But next time, I'm taking a taxi. Yeah.